yeah. I don't know where we're going bowling yet, so I'll probably just get that out of the way. I, I spoke out of, out of turn. I shouldn't have mentioned that, but I was just maybe just hopeful. I was just wishing that uh, we could find our destination as soon as possible. But um, but when I do know, I'll let you guys know. Um, but uh, the uh, you know, looking forward to the last week here. Obviously Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving Day this week, and so looking forward to showing gratitude for all things that we're grateful for, but also uh, thankful that we have this opportunity to play this last game and. Uh, you know, it's going to be on the road, and so we're thankful that we were get this win back home. You know, in Lavelle Stadium last week against um, Utah Tech, and um, so you know, have our seniors not going, juniors uh, that victory that they can remember. Um, but really looking forward to this next week and the preparation for the Stanford game. And something that BYU has not done is beating Stanford. So looking forward. Hopefully, we can get that done. Um, a lot of talent. See it on film. A really good, well-coached team. I mean, Coach Shaw is one of the best out there. So I know they're, this is a, their last game, and, and they're going to find a lot of motivation and strength in their, you know, winning one for their team and their seniors as well. So uh, looking forward to the matchup, and, and we know it's going to be a tough game, but uh, excited that we get to empty the tank and, and uh, you know, uh, do this thing the right way and make make sure we, we show up at our best in all three phases this weekend and looking forward to that game. So. Any questions you guys have? Jay and then Jared. Hey, Kalani, it's no secret that Stanford likes to recruit Utah kids, LDS kids. Got a few on their roster. Does that add any uh, significance to this game for you in terms of recruiting and, and wanting to make a good showing against Stanford? No, I mean, Stanford's not the only one that recruits, you know, LDS kids. Uh, there's, there's a lot of good football players out there that happen to be members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints so and they they've uh, definitely got some and so the I think it's just more about the fit and for the program and the school and the education uh, I wish we could take all all the, the the recruits that are members of the church um, but we can't so there's there's great ones that can go at different places and I think for us it's just a matter of us playing our our game and and doing our best and then uh, you know, not really added uh, any any added motivation than what we have going on right now. Kalani, you mentioned uh, the the Thanksgiving holiday, and you know this is a week to be grateful. And you always express a lot of gratitude. That's one of your you know just kind of who you are as a person. But after a season where you've been through ups and downs, like you have this year, had to see the kids fight through things. Does that make you more grateful than you know some of the seasons where things seem to be maybe a little easier than it has been this year? Of course, I mean the the whole experience is is a learning process for us. You know the the uh, we talk about the culture, love and learn, and, and you, you you learn through the good times. You learn through some adversity as well. So that's uh, committed to to increasing our opportunities to get better, and a lot of that is learning through it. And, also being proud of, of overcoming some adversity and uh, you know we're, we're also I mean you look at it our guys we, we went through a stretch where it was really it was difficult and tough and and um, when you're going through some tough times it's a, it's a good that's a good moment to really count your blessings still you know the fact that they still get to represent their loved ones and the sacrifices that all their families made for them to be here and they get to play this 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 awesome game with with great support and um, a lot of people that are that are interested in what they do. So uh, there's a lot, a lot of things to be thankful for, regardless of any type of situations that you're going through. And I think it's always nice to be reminded of that. Mitch and then Kevin. Kalani, uh, I wanted to follow up from over the weekend. Why was Gunnar Romney not honored at Senior Day? Well, I think because Gunner, from from what I know, Gunner yes, uh, last year was honored, and um, you know I think he's felt like it was uh, you know didn't want to do it again, and so that that's pretty much the only reason. With Houston Hamuli coming back this week to Stanford or going back to Stanford, has his role this year kind of mirrored what you thought it would be coming in, or has he played a little bit less than, than what you thought when you when you brought him into the program? Um, yeah, prob probably if, if you, I mean, you're looking at it, I, 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 
I imagine that you know he's, he's got a lot of experience and was a, a captain for Stanford and all that stuff. But maybe on the field, the, it didn't go as much as he he planned on or or even I anticipated. But um, I can tell you his his uh, impact and influence on our in our program off the field in in the in the locker room and um, just being a, a, a teammate, amazing, a wonderful young man. And, uh, you know, we are a better program with him being here. And so I, I know that uh, he anticipated being on the field a lot more, and there's still a couple games left where he can he can do that. But, yeah, the, the impact that he's left, this is the why he's so valuable is that he he's going to have a lot of success in life and, and um, you know, just because of who he is and, and the fact that he's, I don't know if you guys have had the honor of meeting him, but he's just a, a tons of energy and passion and a wonderful young man and an honor for me to be his coach. Jay and then Jake. Yeah, Kalani, maybe I'm just trying to find a storyline or two, but, uh, <laughs> but as far as the Pac-12, you guys, you're 0-1 this year play another Pac-12 team, is that, does that make this anything, is that something you guys are even worried about, trying to, to make a final statement against the Pac-12 before you go into the independence, or into the Big 12? No, I mean, I, 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 our focus isn't on that stuff. I mean, it, it wasn't even on the, the conference last year, too. So, uh, you know, and you mentioned the first game against Oregon. That seems like so long ago. But uh, I did mention I thought Oregon was going to be a really good team, and and they're proving it. So um, there's good teams all over the place. I, th I think uh, you see some a lot of surprises happen in, in college football, and and some things that, that that people weren't able to predict, you know. And so that's that's what makes it so so fun to watch is that there's every week it's a different story, and so but in this one it's just us trying to do something that the BYU program has never done before, and that's beat Stanford. And so we're, we're focused on that, and we know we're going to be on the road, and it's going to be their senior day. So um, we're going to get their best shot. And you hear me say this all the time, Jay, but I, I, I plan on giving them our best shot as well. So I'd like to see it be done for 60 minutes, you know, from, from beginning to end. And, and then we'll just live with the results. Kalani, in the second half of that Utah Tech game, uh, Jeremy's going over to the sideline to get the calls of the play for the play call. Was there something that Utah Tech had picked up on on your signaling in or something that led to that? No, I think I think Jaron kind of mentioned it a little bit in the post game. mentioned the, the, the off-the-field stuff where we're not, not able to get a lot of the signals off the field on the sidelines. And so I think it, to some of the frustration, the easy way to communicate is just go over there and hear it. In the words, because we we signal quite a bit, and I think there was a just a miscommunication there, and, and it happened, and it caused cost us uh, times, and you know we like to do a lot of movement at the line of scrimmage, and we we had to kind of change up some of our our play calls, and had to quicken up some of the motions, and he wasn't comfortable with that, so I think he just went over to the sideline, try to get better line of communication, and and we'll we'll fix that, and that that's that's the stuff that he was talking about after the game that they're not able to get you know, communication off the field to him on the field. So, um, yeah, that, that's got to be cleaned up. And usually, I mean, that, we should never see those issues this this late in the, game, in, in the season. Sean and then Jared. Hey, Coach, you'll have to excuse no camera because I'm uh, supporting my Welsh ancestors in their opening game of the World Cup right now, and I don't want to show the rest of these guys uh, my biases. But... Uh, <laughs> We'll let it slide this time. That's right. That's right. No, I'm wearing my USA jersey. Don't worry. I, I <laughs> USA, USA. Uh, <laughs> but going back to Houston Hamilton a little bit, because we, and I, I know I've seen him play on some special teams, I think some tongue coverage and that kind of thing, but what kind of has been his role on the field for, for you guys with this team? And maybe as a former BYU fullback yourself, um, a year or two ago, I think it was, that you last played, um, did you ever, like, have you ever kind of had some talks with the offensive coaches about maybe throwing him in there and being kind of one of those meat mashers like, uh, like old Kalani Fafita used to be? Oh, now you're pulling at my heartstrings mentioning the fullbacks, you know, the, listen, the, um, there's, there's so many things that I can do and, and I would love, um, you know, 10 fullbacks out there 
and one quarterback if I could, you know. But the um, in fact, I, we should just rename them all fullbacks. But in terms of the fullback position, I think in some of the situations that we've had, I, I think it's 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 valid for people to question uh, the the lack of the presence of the fullback, and that's that's something that our offensive coaches have to answer, you know. And and, and that, as a head coach, yeah, that that falls on me too. And 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 being a former fullback, it, it's embarrassing. I like to see fullbacks on the field, and so. Uh, you know, we have two games left. Hopefully, we can get that done. Kalani, we're coming to the end of the season. One of the toughest jobs for a head coach is staff decisions. And it's a results-based game, so you have to try and evaluate, okay, how do we look at coaching positions and what guys are doing what? Is that something you look at throughout the year? Is that something you try and keep in mind? Is that something you focus at the end of the season or after the bowl game? I'm just curious what the process is as you go through that and, and do that evaluation process with your staff. Yeah, the evaluation process goes through the whole program. And, and usually when you get towards the end of the year is where you start to review all the notes and the, and the observations that you made throughout the year. So I, I, I evaluate constantly. And, and try to get a, a feel for what's going on in each position group and each coach, and and also with with what we're doing, uh, you know, support staff and things like that. And so I, I think all that stuff I have to be tuned into. Um, that that's what I occupy most of my time doing, and then um, you know just trying to make sure that we're improving and that we're working towards, and we're all aligned and working towards the same goal, which is uh, doing everything we can to make sure that these young men on our team are doing their best on and off the field. And that's that's my focus. And so I, I think I've, uh, I've mentioned this before, I'm committed to, to to making sure that we're the best we can be. And, and, and I think we'll we'll get there. And we, you know, we're going into a new new situation going into the next year. So uh, there's a probably a little bit more urgency for for things to be done. Um, and, and so, the, you know, we'll, we'll evaluate that. And this is the last week of the, of the season. So uh, we'll find out what, what the, um, what my overall um, you know, I guess evaluation of the program is that. Mitch, go ahead. To go along with that urgency, Kalani, there will be, after the, the conclusion of the regular season, there will be a new element uh, thrown on the calendar with the transfer portal windows. I'm curious uh, for you, have you already kind of mapped out maybe uh, – a big board of sorts of, 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 you know, I know that you can't got to wait until guys actually enter, but just kind of already being aware potentially of guys that could enter that portal. And are you and your staff ready to, uh, you know, contact individuals in the portal once that window opens up? Well, I think the first thing you do is you look at your program and you see, you know, there's just quite a few guys that, that have to make the decision of whether or not they're going to be here and if they're going to move on, you know, and, and, and go to, to the next level and get go to the draft or, or, or start their careers, uh, you know, outside of football. So that uh, we'll get there first. Then we build our, our depth chart and look at our depth there and, and see where we can improve and uh, look at look at our our own guys that are, that are looking to go else, elsewhere for, for in the, enter the portal themselves. And most of the time, when people enter the portal, it's, it's because of a uh, uh, playing time and, and they want to be on the field more. And so that's that's something that we have to you have to you have to you know factor in when you're making decisions and I mean I, I like to I like to recruit from within first and see what we have in our program and and, and then add to that and so um, and then they have to be a good fit just because they're in the transfer portal transfer portal is part of recruiting now and you you look at it and you see okay with the success that we've had with the guys that came from the transfer portal is because we'd be able to, to look at them and then evaluate whether or not they're a good fit and, and if they're committed to doing what this what the the football program is about but also if they're aligned with the mission of the church and mission of the, of the university so we're, we're always gonna that's part of recruiting now you have to factor that in and then see what deficiencies and and where you lack some depth and where you can improve on that's 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 the goal we'll take last question from jake yeah, Klein, so I guess it's kind of a two-parter. I, I joined a little bit late, but I, I wanted to know about your relationship with uh, uh, the quarterback at Stanford. I just completely blanked on his name. Um, Tanner McKee. Tanner McKee, your yeah. relationship with him and also your relationship with uh, Coach Shaw, those two individuals. Yeah, I just have tons of respect for David Shaw and, and the coach that he is, and I've had a lot of opportunities to be around him. I can tell you he's, he's – uh, I mean, just an individual that's just all class, and um, it's been it's been really cool to see him as a leader, 
And then, you know, looking at the things that he does in, in, the, in our coaching meetings and things, I mean, he has such a, a high level of respect and, and his reputation uh, from, from everybody in the, in the football world. And so that, I've been really impressed with the things that he's done as a coach and the mentoring that he's done for these young men. Um, and then in regards to Tanner McKee, I, I, wonderful family, great, great young man, uh, tons of talent. He's NFL talent for sure. You can see how how um, how comfortable he is throwing the ball, and th- th- we recruited him. We we wanted him here, and and uh, that's just that's just uh, I, I'm I'm happy to see uh, him doing well and, and and making plays. And I think he's a, he's a guy that that'll go you know pretty early in the draft. I mean I'm I'm not an NFL expert, but uh, you can see the, the the arm talent. You can see the 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 poise and, and the, the the athleticism and the ability to make plays. And so uh, just really happy for him and. Obviously, been really cool to, to cheer him on and see him perform, you know, through his, throughout his career. But I can't cheer for him this weekend, but I can cheer for him, uh, you know, from from this point on as he as he moves on with his career. Thanks so much, Coach. All right, guys. Thanks.